It's been almost one year since Apple released the M1 processor onto the world. And in that time, several of their products have transitioned over to this very powerful yet very efficient technology. However, in the beginning of the transition, there were three computers that started it all. The M1 MacBook Pro, the M1 Mac Mini, and today's subject, the M1 MacBook Air. So after almost a year of use, how has this tiny yet powerful machine held up? Let's find out. And it even, it even closed. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. In the tech world, a pretty constant rule is that nothing ever stands still and the march of progress is always moving forward. But sometimes, sometimes there is that rare product that is sort of outside of the march of progress because of how good it is. And I do not think it's hyperbole to say that the M1 MacBook Air is one of, if not the best laptops that I've ever owned or ever even heard of. With that statement, I think I have two notes that I really need to make right at the start of this video. One, Apple is not paying me to say this. They are not sponsoring this video, nor did they provide me this laptop. This is my base model MacBook Air that I pre-ordered on announcement day. Two, I have a ton of laptops that come through my office. Some are loaned to me, most of them I purchase myself, some I sell and some I keep. In any given year, I'll try out 20 to 30 laptops. And no, that's not all laptops ever released in a given year, but it's a pretty big chunk. Additionally, I've tried out a bunch of tech this year that I've really liked and a lot that wasn't even Apple related. I say that all to put a little more credence behind that earlier statement that the M1 MacBook Air is in Incredible. And if you were to come up to me right now, if you were to walk around this desk and say, Gary, what laptop should I buy today? I would easily recommend this to you. We spent a lot of words to try and sum up the laptop overall. So let's get into some of my favorite parts about this over the last year. And I mean, it's not, nothing is perfect. We'll also talk about some things that I hope they can update in the next version. First off, you cannot talk about the M1 MacBooks of any kind without talking battery life. And I, I say that and I laugh anymore when Apple or when anybody else labels a piece of technology as having all day battery life. Because well, now we have to ask ourselves, okay, what is all day? Is it a work day? Is it a day of gaming? Is it a day of the laptop just sitting in my bag and not doing anything? The answer to that question could be what all day battery life really means and it could be a huge variance between one and the other. Well, the MacBook Air's answer to those questions is a simple yes. On their website, Apple claims that this has 18 hours of battery life. And I gotta tell you fam, if it's not 18 hours exactly, it's pretty darn close. I routinely go days without charging this thing and because of that, I never ever worry about it. If you don't know me, I have two sides of my work life. One, I have my professional job as a project manager, and two, I have my YouTube job. And this kind of battery life does different things for those two sides of me. For my professional life, I never think about it. I literally never think about the battery life. And because of that, I never need to worry about where my next charge is going to come from. And if you aren't a professional or somebody that does a lot of travel client work, that might sound like a small thing to you. But the first time you are embarrassed in a meeting because your computer died and you're now frantically trying to find a plug while somebody is talking, you're trying to listen, you're trying to not be rude to them, but you're trying to find something to plug your laptop into. Yes, ask who that happened to. You will be glad for not needing to worry about this either. The quote unquote creator in me also likes that when traveling starts up again, I won't need to lug around a ton of big, heavy, and mostly not allowed on airplanes anymore, external batteries to keep working no matter where I'm at. I've personally needed to start a video edit in a hotel room, continue it in an Uber, and then finish it on a plane. Do you know what makes that process awful? I mean, just besides doing the whole process by itself, let's say it all together, worrying if the computer will actually make it that long. Did you know that that's what I was going to say? I could easily make a whole video on why the battery life in this laptop has changed how you and I can work, and maybe I still will. But we'll put a pin in this section today. Suffice to say, yes, the M1 MacBook Air has pretty good battery life. But the crazy part is to achieve that battery life, you don't need to accept an i3 dual core equivalent amount of power. You are getting the M1 processor and the M1 GPU, which are nuts for what they are. The power inside of the MacBook Air also changes a lot about what a laptop can and should be. Here, so that we have a factual by the numbers look at what this can do. I'll show you a couple of Cinebench scores so you can see how this stands up to the other processors from the market today. You'll see that in single core, it's pretty high up there. In multi-core though, it's more middle of the pack. But some of these processors are like desktop CPUs or laptop CPUs pulling far more power. And this thing is still a little laptop. I mean, look at this. 
it's tiny. I won't bore you by putting up a bunch of bar graphs showing what numbers compared to what other kinds of numbers, because honestly, that's not all that important to me. It's just that the fact that I can have a laptop of this size and it plays the few games that I play seamlessly and it handles my 4K 10-bit high efficiency files easier than my previous $5,000 iMac Pro, I don't know. I, I'm refusing to open up a thesaurus here. So the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of this is awe inspiring. And I'm really, I'm still, I'm really trying hard to not fall into a hyperbole trap here, but this laptop has been that good for me. I can and have managed this whole YouTube enterprise from this thing. I can't say that for other laptops that aren't huge 16 inch monster machines. This little thing has power that by all rights, it just shouldn't have. And for day to day tasks, well, yeah. Laptops have had the power of Excel for like 15 years now. You will also, as another benefit, you will get all of that power when not plugged into the wall. So that 18 hours of battery life gets you this awe-inspiring power no matter where the laptop is physically located. At this point in the video, if you aren't super into laptops and computers and you don't know much about the M1 MacBook Air, you might be thinking, well, Gary, if you were saying this laptop has the best battery life, the best power, and it's this small, obviously, Gary, obviously, it's going to be very expensive, right? Well, team, I'm going to hit you with the Uno Reverse card. I've been saving the card all deck just to get back at you. Uno Reverse. This is also one of the most affordable laptops on the market, too. Yes! This thing is the trifecta, and we never, ever get the trifecta. Even at its retail price of $999, I think this is a ton of laptop for the money. But you can easily find these for $849 on the Apple refurbished website, which when you buy there, it gets treated like a brand new laptop. There just, I mean, there just isn't a laptop on the market that can compete against this in any of the three major arenas. Like I said, I keep, every time we get a little more excited, a little more excited, I'm trying to not get too hyped about this. But in each of these three sections, normally you have to pick two of these three. You can have great performance, great battery life, and it'll be big and expensive. Or you can have great performance, bad battery life, and it's reasonably priced, or some mix and matching of those three. You don't have to make such a distinction for the MacBook Air. It's really the combination of everything that you could want in a laptop. Like I said though, and as hyped as that first section was, it's not perfect, and there are a few things that I hope can be adjusted or updated for the next iteration. First, the webcam, it's not great. Yes, the M1 started the Apple trend of installing the new image signal processor with all of their computers to make the camera look a little bit better, and that works real good on the M1 IMAX, but here we're starting off with a 720p camera, it's not great. With a lot of work being done virtually anymore, making sure that these cameras look and sound good, it's not a bonus anymore. It's starting to be the main reason somebody buys a computer in the first place. If they were to put the camera system for the M1 IMAX in the MacBooks, mm, well then again, I guess that also wouldn't be fair. I also don't like that this screen only goes up to 400 nits of brightness. I would very much like to see a brighter panel in the future. Like I said, some of the major positives of the MacBook Air are how well it works when not plugged in, or when you are on the move. Well, when you are on the move, the sun is probably gonna be there, right? I mean, the sun is everywhere, and 400 nits of brightness is pretty low if you're going to need to contend with sun glare. While the laptop is built out of very high quality materials, it's kind of boring to look at. I see Dell and Razer coming out with all sorts of gorgeous looking laptops, and my MacBook Air, it's kind of meh to look at. So I also hope that they're able to fully redesign this chassis in the future to give a little more spice and a little more of a modern look. Another issue I hope gets fixed is from the M1 processor itself. Something about the M1 means that you cannot have multiple displays connected via the Thunderbolt port itself like you could on previous Intel base Macs. So for here, you only get one up to 6K monitor to work with. For me, using a gigantic ultra wide display, that's not that big of a deal, but if you are a wall o monitors kind of person, yes, that could be an issue here. Speaking of Thunderbolt, the last thing that I also don't like and hope they update in the future is that we only get two Thunderbolt ports and both of them are located on the same side. Turning a laptop into a working from home desktop setup computer, it's really helpful to have ports on both sides. So I'd either like to have four, you know, two and two, or keep the two, but have one and one. I think that would give you a little more versatility in setting up your own home office. But at the end of the day, so what, right? How has the M1 MacBook Air held up after the past year? Has it held up to the initial 
and the overall hype? Well, for me personally, yes. Obviously, we've made a ton of videos about this. I think we've made so many videos about this computer because I just can't stop talking about it. And like I said in the beginning, this is single-handedly the best laptop that I've ever owned. I love it. It's totally changed what I expect from all sorts of technology. And the only time I don't have this with me is when I'm testing out a different laptop for this channel. I know there are still some app and plugin issues with various software developers still finding it hard to transition to the ARM based system that the M1 runs off of. But for me personally, everything I use works perfectly. This has hands down been one of the best tech purchases that I've ever made. And Apple's gonna have to do something remarkable with their new lineup to unseat this because making a more powerful MacBook Air won't exactly stop me from recommending this based on its price to performance ratio. The amount that you spend on this, you get far more computer from this than you do anywhere else. But what about you? Do you have a MacBook Air? Have you had similar experiences or have you had issues with yours? Let me know in the comments below because obviously everyone is going to have their own opinion and I want to hear yours. And if you liked this video and you want to see some coverage on the latest and greatest of the new Apple mobile line, you can find my video talking about whether you should or should not buy the new iPad mini by clicking right here. Click, 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 click. <laughs> Thanks for watching.